back from MegaCon. I knew this would happen. Tom, you know this happens every time you go to a convention. Another week, another list, another convention. Shout out to all the homies I got to see at MegaCon. And, of course, your boys got the con crud again. But we're still here every week covering the hottest back issues in the world. And we're going to start with number 10. We have Moon Knight, issue number one from 1980, his first ongoing solo series. This is a great Bill S. cover. This is a comic book that was being heavily speculated on prior to the rumors that we may get a Moon Knight series. And then as the anticipation began, the book shot up. Back in 2021, it reached heights of $1,350. The last GPA sale happened last month in March for $400. Quite a steep dip, but it's all because there was never a guarantee that we would get a season two. Oscar Isaac said multiple times that this relationship with Marvel was very unique and that he was only signing up for one season, unlike many other actors on Disney+. Plus. And here we are, rumors of season two, plus a new or perhaps secret Avengers in the works here. We have some high-performing sales, starting with a 7.5. It sold for $75, which is 21% above its 12-month average. The 9.4 is up 55%, selling for $195. And the 9.6 is up 23%, now selling for $235. Can you believe it? One year ago this week, Moon Knight debuted on Disney+. Plus. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. We're here every seven days covering the health of the comic book marketplace, the hottest books in the world. And we utilize the best comic app in the world to do it. It's called Key Collector Comics. Utilize code TOM101 to unlock a free two-week subscription of the app. Get access to this list prior to when we hit the mic. Key alerts, suggested pricing, catalog your comic books, and so much more. If you had Key Collector, you would have already seen this list before this video came out, and you would know that number nine was Frankenstein number one. We're talking the Marvel version. Now, this is the first appearance of Frankenstein under the Marvel banner. However, we did see Frankenstein in X-Men 40, but that was revealed to be an android, and Frankenstein appeared in the Atlas run of comic books. Now, there's a couple of things going on with Frankenstein. The most notable is probably that James Gunn is adapting the character for their Creature Commandos animated series, but that's the wrong Frankenstein. That's the DC Frankenstein that first appeared in Detective Comics 135. We also found out this past week that Peter Jackson's teaming up with Hayden Christensen to do a Frankenstein movie. Now, as far as comic book spec, maybe some members are just buying the wrong book. Otherwise, they're just buying horror Bronze Age classics and... To me, that's always a good bet. That's true. Regardless of what's going on in outside media, you can't go wrong with Marvel Bronze Age Horror. We got a record-breaking sale in a 3.0. It sold for $50 in January of this year, already up 46%, now selling for $68. We also have a 9.0 that sold for $220, just about 1% above its 12-month average, and a 9.2 that tied its all-time record high, selling for $450, putting it 44% above its average. There's under 900 slabs that exist of this book on the CGC census, and there's 34 graded at a 9.8. The record high was set last year in May, where it reached $3,395. We've seen so many books drop aggressively in a short period of time. In under 12 months for some, the last sale was in January for $3,178. This book barely moved. You always have to keep in mind the census count. That's very true. Moving on to number eight, the Daredevil takeover starts here. We have Daredevil 158 from 1979, which is the first Frank Miller artwork on the title. We have a record-breaking sale, 7.0, which sold for $100 back in 2018, is up 3%, now selling for 103. The 8.0 sold for 140, that's 19% up. The 9.2, $199, that's 7% up. The 9.4 sold for 275, that's 7% up. And the 9.8 sold for 14 undo, that's 10% up. The last time a CGC 9.8 broke records was in October 2021, where it sold for $1,550. The last GPA sale was the number I just revealed, at 1400 this book has barely moved. Clearly, it's respected. And it doesn't hurt that Frank Miller is doing a CGC signing. But if you're thinking about sending something in now, it's too late. Daredevil has a couple of things going for him right now. Daredevil Born Again will be premiering on Disney Plus and the Frank Miller signing like you mentioned. We should probably keep an eye on the census count. There are 2,731 slabs total. Let's see if that increases in these upcoming weeks. We did see a staggering increase during the Todd McFarlane signings. Where do you think this is going to end up? Let me know in the comment section below. If you did send something down or if you wanted to, what would you have Frank Miller sign? 
Tell me you at least sent a few copies of your 300 number one reprint with the Johnny DeJardins cover. You know I had to send some copies in, especially because I was chilling with Johnny DeJardins all weekend. We have some dual sigs coming back from CGC. Looking at the list at number seven, the Joker number one from 1975. I suspect more pictures being released has spiked this book. People are so psyched, hyped about Lady Gaga's interpretation, portrayal of Harley Quinn. We're starting to get pictures from the set, Joker and Harley both at the iconic staircase where he danced in the first film. We've seen the first appearance of Harley Quinn in comics make the list. We've seen the first appearance in DC continuity, and now we're getting the first Joker ongoing series. There are 2,254 total slabs on the census and four high performers to talk about. A 6.0 is up 46%, selling for 150 the 7.0 can't keep up. It's up 11%, but also selling for 150. The 8.0 is up 33%, selling for 220. And the 9.6 is up 12%, selling for 500 bucks. The record high is a CGC 9.8 hit was $2,900, and it was short-lived. It was really hovering around the $2,000 marker for some time. The last GPA sale sold for $1,705, and that was back in January of this year. Now, something I thought was very interesting is that there's only been 16 9.8 sales that's happened since the start of 2021. But if you look back to 2020, there was a total of 15 9.8 sales in that one year alone. This right here shows that members who secure their 9.8 clearly love this character in this book because they be holding. Yeah, if you get a 9.8 for a book that's from 1975, that's one that you want to hold on to. Moving on to number six on the list, we've got more Deadpool goodness. New Mutants 98, his first appearance. Something I found very intriguing, did not know this, and I want to know in the comment section, did anybody else see this information? Zeb Wells, the writer of Amazing Spider-Man, has just been tied to be one of the producers for Deadpool 3. And to my shock, this isn't the first time that he's participated in the production for Marvel slash superhero features. He was actually the person who wrote episode seven of She-Hulk. That's where we saw like the porcupine and man bull. It makes sense that a comic book writer put in all those obscure cameos, and it's probably one of the most memorable episodes from that season. Zeb Wells is one of the four writers in the upcoming Marvel's movies and is the lead writer in the standalone Marvel Zombies animation. And there are a whopping 227 more slabs added to the CGC census since this made the Hot 10 on February 27th, bringing that total up to 22,783. The 7.0 is up 17%. The 7.5 is up 9%. And the 8.5 is up 11% from its 12-month average. The 9.6 sold for 625, putting it up 5%. And the 9.8 sold for $1,733, 9% above that 12-month. Keep in mind, New Mutants 98 at a CGC 9.8 hit heights of $3,000 in March 2021. The most recent 9.8 sale puts this at $1,733, and that sale happened March of this year. Looking at number five on the list, we have the Omega Men, number three, the first appearance of Lobo, despite no new news, still shooting up in copies sold. It's actually looking less and less likely that Jason Momoa will portray Lobo on screen. It looks like he might have been excited that the Aquaman character will continue from the Snyderverse to the James Gunn universe. How do you feel about that, Jem? Because I think Jason Momoa's Aquaman is akin to Amanda Waller's portrayal. It was so stellar. It was so spot on. John Cena Peacemaker, for example. No reason to change the actor. He definitely did the role justice as Aquaman, and those characters that you mentioned are also coming over from the Snyderverse. I just kind of would rather see him as Lobo. Just because he may still be Aquaman doesn't mean that someone else couldn't portray Lobo. Well, we do have a slew of sales, largely because the spec has been so heavy since the start of the year that the supply is meeting the demand. There's been an increase of 43 copies added to the census since we chatted about this book just last week when this comic hit number two on our hot 10 list. The 9.0 is up 20% from its 12-month average, selling for $100. The 9.2, also selling for $100, can't keep up either, but still up 2% from its 12-month. The 9.4 is up 18%, and the 9.8 sold for $370, 11% above its 12-month average. This book has cleared $400 multiple times at a CGC 9.8. However, the last GPA sale hit $350, so although some members are being patient and scoring deals, others don't want to miss out on any potential news that may blow this book up even more. 
And speaking of actors reprising their roles, we've got Vincent D'Onofrio, we've got Charlie Cox, we've got John Bernthal, and number four on the list, we've got Daredevil 183 from 1982 with that classic Daredevil vs. Punisher cover. We got another Frank Miller key comic book. The first battle between Daredevil and the Punisher began here. And with the John Bernthal spec, we're also hearing rumors about Vincent D'Onofrio's portrayal, which is going to focus largely on Wilson Fisk's fight for the mayor position. This right here has been a book that's been creeping up. The 9.0 hit $62 back in 2016. It sold for $75. It's up 21%. The newsstand 9.2 sold for $75 back in 2022. It's up 33%, hitting the $100 marker for the first time in comic history. The 9.6 newsstand hit $139 back in 2022. It's up 8% selling for $150. So three record breakers, and we also have three strong performers. I'll kick it off with the newsstand. The 9.8 sold for $425. 4% above its 12-month average, the 9.4 is up 23%, and the 9.6 is up 39%, selling for a buck 35. Although the Frank Miller signing may account for some of the increase on the census count, knowing that the deadline was last Friday, these sales wouldn't have been able to reach their buyer and then to Florida in time likely. So I'm thinking the spec has mostly to do with Daredevil Born Again. Like I said, Daredevil's got a lot going on for it right now. With the Frank Miller signing and the show coming up, lots of good things happening for Matt Murdock. But I can't believe number three on the list is Shazam number one again. That's right. We have DC beginning to do the publishing of Shazam since the Golden Age. We have a book that is very, very respected. It's a major key for the character, and it's rather affordable. But because of the conclusion of Shazam 2 and the ratings being what it is, we're seeing a plethora of copies hit the stands and sell aggressively despite the fact that the book is down overall. Yeah, I think the fact that we're in a soft market and it is a well-respected key like you mentioned is why we're still seeing so many sales post the movie. Now, a 9.8 had heights of over $1,000 as early as 2020. The last GPA sale though, $700 and that was March of this year. Now, we do have an 8.5, up 24% from its 12-month average, a 9.0, up 23%. The 9.2 sold for $165, which is 35% above that average, and the 9.4 selling for 200, 23% above it. Now, just last year, because I was looking at this book on GPA recently, there was an October sale for $545 for a CGC 9.8 and a November sale of $405. Keep an eye on this book, because although many are probably dumping it because of Shazam 2. This right here is such a major key moment that if you can snag it for five to $700, I can't imagine it dropping that much lower. There's only 295 graded at 9.8 on the census. No, it's definitely a great time to buy. And what did I say? Daredevil Takeover. Number two on the list is Daredevil issue number one, Daredevil's first appearance. Can you believe it, Jem? We've been covering this list for so long. One of the very first giant record-breaking sales that we covered was back in March 2021 for Daredevil number one, the book on the list, one of two copies sold at a CGC 9.8, and we reported a $250,000 sale. Hot damn. I do remember that, and we had already been doing these videos for some time before that, so we've been at this for a while. Make sure to hit that like, make sure you're subscribed, and let's take a look at these strong performers. A .5 sold for $1,329, 4% above its 12-month average. The 2.5 is up 59%, selling for $4,500, and the 3.0 is up 26% with a $4,200 sale. And take a look at this. The 2.5 was the second highest sale it's ever reached in comic history. The highest being just a couple hundred dollars more for 4700 It nearly matched that price. And the 3.0 is the highest sale that this book's achieved since May 2022. Now, this is also the first appearance of Matt Murdock's supporting cast, Foggy Nelson, Karen Page, and we are getting a lot of actors reprising their roles, but it's still unclear whether or not they will be reprising those characters. Kind of hard to imagine them bringing back so many characters from the Netflix days without the supporting cast. Let me know in the comment section below, do you want to see the reprisal of their roles? Do you want to see Iron Fist? And while we take it to number one, 
Support the show. Give me an excuse to send you comics every single month. I'm putting in a House of Secrets 92 Gabriel Del Auto trade dress reprint of the first appearance of Swamp Thing in every single mystery mail call this month. ComicTom101.com to join the community. Get comic books from us. And Jem, hit them with the number one hottest book in the cosmos. You know it be that Star Wars 1, baby. Mandalorian Season 3 is currently streaming. And usually we're seeing Star Wars books with some type of Mandalorian tie but today we're getting the og the first appearance of everybody we typically see star wars one rank high on the key collector hot 10 when star wars fever starts to spread i mean i sit in front of star wars heir to the empire one at a 9.8 for a good reason grad admiral thrawn is about to shake stuff up but we also have star wars visions in the distance mandalorian is is not my favorite show but a lot of people like it no, I dug seasons one and two. I haven't started on season three yet, but it's a very accessible Star Wars show. And we have 268 more slabs on the CGC census since this was number nine on the hot 10 on February 6th, bringing that total to just over 14,000. We have a ton of high performing sales as well. The 7.5 is up 8% and keep an eye on the 7.5s and 8.0s because there's a huge price jump when you get to that 8.5, which just sold for $600. That's 103% above its 12 month average. The 9.2 is up 33%. The 9.4 is up 48% and the 9.6 is up 45%. But then we have the 9.8, selling for $4,900, 6% above its 12-month average. But wait a minute. This high sale that Jem just reported on, $4,900, was prior to two other sales hitting the marketplace. One on April 1st for $7,800 and another for $5,760. Now, considering that these sales happen on heritage auctions, we know that the prices tend to get a bit higher there than most platforms. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. However, the heights this book reached was $9,600 back in April 2022. And keep in mind, third 13 out of the 15 sales this year were all under $5,000, so maybe just have a little bit of patience on this one. Hit the like, slap the subscribe, and as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Here at Ever Comics, spending way too much money like I do. We have other videos for you to check out. Peep the store. We have a bunch of brand new variants that we just released. The last Something is Killing the Children Zoo or Zoo variant is officially available, and I priced the Virgin cover for 15 bucks. Link in the description. Have a great holiday and get responsibly.